As watchers know, sometimes it's not all about retro. Sometimes it's about the tools I use to produce the content on this channel. And that's what the video is today. Let's learn how to use a webcam on an ATEM Mini, Mini ISO, Mini Extreme, Mini Extreme ISO, any of those ATEM Minis, this tip will work for you. You know, during the pandemic of 2020, online meetings took over all of our lives, and I was in search of a good meeting presence. I wanted to look good during those meetings, and I accumulated an insane number of USB webcams. And I tried everything from very cheap $25 to finally getting my hands on a brilliant Logitech 4K Brio webcam that is one that I still use today. And at the beginning of the pandemic, after a virtual day of meetings, I started to build my YouTube channel using the same webcams with OBS Studio on my Mac. I'd use the Brio for a headshot and one of the cheaper models for a workbench view. You know, it worked and it got me started, but I quickly saw the need for a dedicated audio-visual streaming platform and better cameras. This led me to the ATEM Mini, followed later by the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. The ATEM Mini line, unlike another purchase, the Yolo Box Pro, does not support USB cameras. To connect cameras to the ATEM Mini, the camera must have a clean HDMI out connection. This requires pricey DSLR or mirrorless cameras normally. I chose a mirrorless Sony ZV-1 for my setup. Starting cost for these cameras is around $600, and if you want more than one in your studio, that's a pretty pricey proposition. My solution won't be better and won't provide better quality than any of the cameras I mentioned. Let me just make sure and get that disclaimer out there. But if you have a high quality webcam, this option may work and save you money with your ATEM Mini setup. The key to making a USB webcam work with an ATEM Mini is the $170 RGB Link TAO or TAO One Tiny. Let's see how it works. But before I show you the one tiny, if you found value in this video, make sure you hit that thanks button down below. You can also start your shopping for any of the things I mentioned using the links found down below in the video description, but also on the companion blog post, which contains a lot more information than what you're finding in this video. Hey, and if you like my retro content, you can become a member of the channel by going to buy me a coffee slash retro combs and joining at some fun Commodore inspired levels. For instance, you can start for just $1 a month at the Vic 20 level and you get some benefits along with it. All right, before we hook up the One Tiny, let's take it out of the box and see what's inside. Inside the box, we find the One Tiny UVC to HDMI converter. We find a handy dandy instruction manual, which you may or may not need to refer to. You'll also find a USB C to USB C cable to supply power. And you'll see that we have a USB-A to USB-C adapter should you need that for any of your connections. It's important to know that the One Tiny does not include a power brick. You'll have to provide that power. On the One Tiny are the following ports. You get a USB-C power, you get a USB 2.0 connector, which is used for USB 2.0 cameras and as a way to update the firmware. I'll show you that in a little bit. You also have a USB 3.0 connector for webcams that support USB 3.0. And finally, you have HDMI out. What you may notice immediately is there are no audio inputs or outputs on the One Tiny. The device does not support audio. It doesn't support the microphones built into webcams, and you can't add an additional microphone. Now, with the One Tiny out of the box, let's get it connected. Connecting the One Tiny to the ATEM Mini is a breeze. You're going to connect an HDMI cable from the One Tiny to an HDMI in on the ATEM Mini. Select the correct input source on the ATEM Mini. Plug the webcam into either the USB-A or USB-C input port. If using USB-C, don't confuse it with the USB-C port that provides power. Just double check the labels on the top of the One Tiny. Plug the included USB-C cable into the USB-C power on the One Tiny, and then plug the other end into a power source. How does this differ from my Sony ZV-1 connection? Other than the brick, which is mounted on a vertical support bar, it really doesn't. 
There's an HDMI plug to my A10 Mini and a power source for the One Tiny. It's a pretty lean setup since Teo kept the unit as One Tiny as they could. Once I made the connections and applied power, the first thing I noticed was the sound of the fan. I don't suspect with a good microphone that your audience will hear this device, but I was a bit surprised that this tiny device needed a fan. I was eager to test compatibility with webcams. Would this thing work with any webcam, even all the way from those cheap webcams all the way up to the more expensive webcams? So to test that compatibility, I broke out five different webcams. And let me give you the list of the five from what I consider the lowest to the highest quality. The first one is the Unzano HD650. The next one is an Unzano HD600, which includes a light. The next one was the Luca 4K. Finally, we start getting up into some known brands, the Logitech C920, and then my lovely Logitech Brio. Those will be the five webcams we'll test. As I try each one, I'll provide a tag at the bottom of the screen so that you know which one is being displayed. Now I was very pleased that all five of those camera works, but out of the box, the One Tiny was a few firmware versions behind. Teo makes it easy to find the firmware and upgrade. Let's take a look at the steps from the instructions. There are a few things you need to know if you're going to upgrade your firmware. First of all, we visit the Teo One Tiny webpage. Link is in the video description below and on the companion blog post, as well as these instructions. Scroll down to the Details area and click the Downloads header. Scroll to the bottom of the page to the Expose and Firmware area. Click the word Firmware and a file will download to your computer. Locate the download and decompress it. A folder with a name similar to Teo One Tiny Firmware version 1. blah 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 will appear. Click inside the folder to find two PDF files and another folder called Upgrade File. Double click that folder. Inside the folder is a file with a name similar to tiny4kfirmware-version1 dot blah 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 dot img. Copy that folder to a fat formatted USB drive. The instructions recommend that there are not any other files on the USB drive. I, I would concur with them. Unplug the USB-C power cable on the One Tiny, but leave 
HDMI, and the webcam plugged in. That is an important step. Don't forget that one. Plug the USB drive with the firmware into the One Tiny. Plug the USB-C power back into the One Tiny. The device will boot and soon two successive screens will appear indicating the upgrade status. Once complete, the One Tiny will reboot and display the old and new firmware versions. That's a great feature. I wish more devices would say I've upgraded from this to this just recently. Once it's done upgrading, the webcam attached should appear via the video out on the A10 Mini. For me, that whole process took about five to six minutes. Now we assume that with the firmware upgrade comes some compatibility with other cameras. Now I didn't have any issues, so what features am I getting out of this firmware upgrade? The one thing that was appealing to me was the README indicates a quieter fan. I noticed a slight difference. Okay, let's talk through this. This is not an inexpensive device, but let's talk about the value of the Teo One Tiny. If you add a $130 Logitech Brio, and that's a decent camera with decent optics, your total cost for a high quality autofocus 4K camera is about $310. I have two $200 Zoom Q2N 4Ks. These portable cameras have great sound, but remember the One Tiny can't capture that sound, and are great outdoor cameras, but they really struggle in low light indoors. However, their flexibility and inclusion of a micro HDMI connector made them really attractive to me. My plan was always to upgrade these zoom cameras to mirrorless cameras on my A10 Mini setup and then use those cameras as part of an kind of on the go studio with the Yolo Box Pro. The zooms are set up in two locations, one as a studio camera, which is this camera right here, and the other I used as a top down camera, which I can't show you because I've already removed it and replaced it with the One Tiny. But if you look at any of my past videos, anytime I'm doing a desk down view to my left, that's a zoom camera. Now, I know the zoom camera isn't designed to be a top-down camera, but that HDMI port made it easy to deploy in my studio. However, I've radiated my desk with a ton of light, and for unknown reasons, the camera will not give me the quality I need. So replacing the top-down desk camera with a Teo, One Tiny, and the Brio, that was a huge upgrade, as you can see in this view here. Autofocus works. I can bring it closer. I can set it down, I have my hands, I have good light, and all the flesh tones are very similar to what I have here. So replacing the top-down desk camera with the Teo One Tiny and the Brio, again, was a huge upgrade. The Brio performs better in low light and has the autofocus I was looking for. A camera that would get close to these functions is probably $500 and up. In my case, which is a person with a spare webcam and using, thanks to all of you, some Amazon affiliate revenue to cut the cost of the Teo One Tiny in half, made this a good value proposition for me. My total cost for this setup, just recently based on me already having a Brio webcam and again, some affiliate dollars was a hundred bucks. That's a heck of a deal for this kind of camera quality. So what's my final recommendation to you if you're trying to connect a USB webcam to the A10 Mini. I'll admit, the Teo One Tiny does have an initial sticker shock. However, it does everything it says, and as of the time of this writing, is the only device I found that allows you to use a webcam with your A10 Mini. And I admit, I just love the plug and play solution this provides to get that webcam input into my A10 Mini. However, despite the cost, if you have a specific reason you need to connect a USB webcam to your A10 Mini or have a decent quality webcam laying around the studio and want to incorporate it into your A10 Mini setup or any other HDMI in source, this is probably the device for you. It's small, easy to set up, and receives firmware upgrades. What more could you ask for? So that's one tool I use to create content on my YouTube channel. If you're interested in a tool I use to repair my retro computers, check out this video on the LifeGoo Precision Screwdriver. If you just need some good retro content and you'd like a good modern spin on it, check out this Mega 65 video. So that concludes this video for today. At this time, Retrocombs out.